Okay, I have been trying to do this video for a couple of days. Um, my last video, uh, memory card was corrupted or something, so I'm going to do the introduction and you might see a different look from here to there. I don't really know. Hey guys, I'm going to get through this very quickly or this um, video is going to be a mile long and no one has time for a mile. I already uploaded a video about a bee venom anti-aging moisturizer and I got so many questions and such confusion about it so I'm redoing it and I'm going to in, I'm going to upload each individual recipe separately um, before I told you about the oils and then I showed you one recipe I'm just going to tell you about the oils in this one so I will be um, giving you just the basics in this video the essential oils the active ingredients and then, to, to the, so there's no more confusion, I will um, upload four separate videos for each of the recipes. I will upload the DMAE Serum, which looks like this. I will upload a video for the DMAE Spritzer, which looks like this. I will upload a video for the DMAE Moisturizer, which looks like this. And then I will also upload a video for the B Venom Anti-Aging Cream, which looks like this, okay? That way, um, you can just watch the recipe that you want, and remember, if you, if, if you make it a little too oily, just maybe add a little more base or a little more powder. Um, and then next time you'll learn and by the time by the fourth or fifth time that you make this you'll have it down and Do what I do um, Some weeks I'll add something extra some weeks I'll take this away just to see and it's really a very good way for you to keep your skin um, Working better for you and that's it So I had bought all of these moisturizers and anti-aging serums and creams and I spent thousands of dollars and I joined a club where you had to pay $100 a month and I would have some sort of reaction. And so I thought, I want to know what is in my moisturizer and my anti-aging creams. Um, what am I paying for? You know, these companies have to preserve these moisturizers and anti-aging serums for years on the shelves so they are filled with preservatives and when you do buy them and get them you're lucky if you get two percent of an actual active ingredient like hyaluronic acid or anything like that just searched on essential oils what they do you know their benefits I've really done a lot of research and I encourage you to do the same um, This is the basics. I use aloe vera and glycerin as an absorption component only. Both are readily absorbed by the skin and that's why they are in my recipes. That's it, okay? Um, bee venom is this. It's a powder, a powerful anti-aging ingredient. It looks um, just like powder, it's yellow powder, and it is actually bee venom powdered. This, you only use two teaspoons per 50 mLs. Don't think that by adding more, it will work faster or better. It will probably just irritate your skin and cause adverse reactions, and it will probably cancel out what you're trying to do. This was where I think some people had confusion. Um, during the winter, I used bees wax, and that was the recipe that I showed you guys where I used the double broiler. And it looks like this. It is just hard little sticks, cubes. You can get it already, um, you know, little pieces. Okay, but it is very oily and very greasy on the skin. So now that it's summer, I don't need that. I'm going to use just a base cream, which is just a very thick cream, moisturizer, body butter, whatever. I use a base cream in my anti-aging DMAE moisturizer and I use a base in my anti-aging B venom cream. So I think that's where the confusion was. People thought that beeswax and B venom were the same thing. And when you do add bee venom, it's only two teaspoons per 50 mLs, okay? The beeswax I used, I melted a one and a fourth wax for my cream. Um, 
but I'm not going to use that this summer, only in the winter. But it's great for dry skin because it's very greasy and oily on the skin. I put it on at night and it absorbs when I wake up. I wash my face. No dryness. Okay. DMAE looks like this and it is a white powder. It is also an anti-aging and, and, and wrinkling fighting defense powder. Um, I use this in my serum, my mist, my moisturizer. This is something that you will have to play around with. I did see results after two teaspoons, but if you use two teaspoons in your moisturizer or your cream and you don't see results, add like a fourth teaspoon more and so on, you know, and if you see results at two and a fourth, that's where you stop. Don't think also that by adding three teaspoons, you know, it's going to work better and faster. You don't want to add too much because it can also cause the opposite to happen for you, you know, if you use too much. It can also cause your skin to be irritated. It can actually start to break down your skin. So don't use too much of that either. Okay, so that's the, um, the basic acti active ingredients, okay? We're gonna talk about the first three essential oils. These are the very fragranced oils. Let's start with frankincense. The most expensive it is. A small bottle is like $8. I mean, it is very expensive, but one drop, and that's gonna last you a while. It is a very small bottle, but you're only going to need one drop for this. That's it, and it's gonna last a while. This is actually 10 mLs. So once you buy these oils, they're yours. I mean, I bought all of these for less than probably $50. Um, Frankincense reverses the signs of aging. It lifts sagging skin. It plumps up the skin, and it is great for dry skin, um, which is so weird because when you put a drop on, it's very drying, but it's great for dry skin, so so crazy. But it is the most expensive, but it is also the absolute best natural oil for aging skin. I cannot stress that enough. Um, rather you already have wrinkles and sagging skin or you want to use this just maybe one drop for 50 mLs to prevent aging symptoms, this is the one. Um, I, I wasn't able to use it, but I'm going to try again. It did cause me to have a rash of some sort, but um, sometimes if I try something and I have a reaction, I can go back and just maybe a little, you know, like a little less. So I'm going to use like a half a drop next time, but I'm going to try because if you can use this, you are one of the luckiest girls in the world and I wish I could use it. And if you can't, if you're like me and you have a reaction, I'm sorry, but I'm in the same boat, but I'm going to keep Geranium. Trying. This is the stronger scented of all oils. It prevents sagging skin and wrinkling of the skin. It reduces puffy eyes, lightens and removes dark spots and acne scars, and it gives your muscles a more toned appearance. One drop per 50 mLs. I ain't playing. It is very, very strongly scented. It is sweet smelling and you can't mask it. You can't throw lavender on top of it and think it's going to go away. It is very strong. Um, the stronger ones, frankincense, geranium, lavender, use those in your nighttime moisturizer. That way you can put it on and just go to sleep and you won't have to worry about the smell. Wake up in the morning, wash your face, you know, and that's it. But yeah, geranium is very strong but it has a lot of benefits. Lavender oil know. is the least of the strongly scented and it is, and the staying power of lavender oil is not as strong. You know, it wears off a little faster. It prevents and heals acne. It slows down aging with powerful antioxidants. It improves signs and symptoms of eczema or psoriasis and it alleviates headaches. So even if you don't have like acne or acne conditions, a lavender mix spray or a spritzer would be so beneficial to those of you that have eczema or psoriasis. Just spray it on your skin and it will help alleviate those symptoms and the breakouts and stuff. Apricot kernel seed oil is readily absorbed in creams and oils. It is great to mix with a round organic sugar as an exfoliant. Um, but just make sure that you are using round sugar, you know, not the irregular cut because it can actually damage the skin surface and you don't want that. But this exfoliator, maybe once a week, it'll exfoliate and get rid of all the dead skin. And then the apricot kernels, it'll actually just make, it just moisturizes your face. And then there's apricot oil, not apricot kernel seed oil, apricot oil. This reduces inflammation. It is great for those puffy eyes. It has anti-aging and antibacterial properties. 
It is great for irritated, inflamed, and angry red acne spots, especially if they're open. It will cleanse them because it is an antiseptic and it will prevent damage from free radicals. Free radicals are particles in the environment and pollution and stuff or the air atmosphere that attack the, our skin and cause us to age. So apricot oil actually prevents those from doing that. And it is great for acne and cystic Carrot oil. Acne. Keeps your skin from wrinkling. It stimulates blood flow, which if you use it with the bee venom and the you know that stimulates blood flow along with the carrot, that's just like a double decker slammer right there. I mean that's some good stuff. And ladies, it keeps your hair from turning white. Um, rose so hip oil I chose because it is full of fatty acids, vitamin C, B carotene, and forms of vitamin A. It corrects dark spots. It hydrates the skin. Um, it's been used from the Egyptians to the 1800s and to most recently Victoria's Secret models. Do your own research because rosehip oil is amazing. Vitamin C diminishes sun damage, promotes collagen production. And um, the only thing about this is when you use it, it must be stored in an opaque container because it will um, oxidize and lose its strength. And I use it in my serum, which is in this container, and I use it in this. So make sure I get on uric acid. This has been one of the most requested questions when I did my last recipe for you guys. So, um, do your own research, of course, but I'll tell you. Hydrolinuric acid is a smart nutrient that adjusts its moisture absorption rate based on the humidity relative to the seasons and climate. And unlike collagen, it can penetrate the upper layers of the skin and it boosts elasticity. So yes, I absolutely use hydrolinuric acid in my anti-aging um, serum and my moisture cream. Grapeseed oil is composed mostly of lineolic acids which contain polyunsaturated fats, which feeds the skin. It repairs broken capillaries. It relieves dermatitis, which is inflammation of the skin. It contains high levels of vitamin E, which is fat-soluble antioxidant, and it diminishes sun damage. Grapeseed oil is in my moisturizer. Sweet almond oil smooths and moisturizes the skin. It hydrates the skin, scalp, and hair. Um, I use this in my serum sometimes, but I always use it in my eyelash oil that I have, and I always use it in my once a month hair oil Avocado treatment. Avocado oil is my favorite of all oils. It is the best for dry skin, which is me. It contains high levels of vitamin A, D, and E. It heals sun damage. It causes your skin to be more supple, and then it's, like I say, it's great for dry skin. Also, it moisturizes and boosts your scalp health. So if you're one of those girls or guys that have been buying the tea gels and the really expensive dandruff shampoos and things like that, um, I would recommend trying a little bit in your shampoo. Just add a little, you know, teaspoon or so in your shampoo. Or if you want to do it directly, you can take like a little bottle with a dropper and literally just drop it down your scalp and massage it in. You could leave it anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes to overnight, depending on how long you want to leave it in. It actually repairs your scalp and your scalp health. So it's very good for things like that. And a great benefit is that it is Lemon great oil. for diaper rash. And it is another one of the small ones. It cleanses, purifies, and brightens your skin and it increases the luster to dull skin. So it's gonna brighten dull skin. It's going to give back, give your skin back its luster. And it, if you use it as a peel, oh, so amazing. Now, these recipes are just basis, okay? Think about you and your skin and really analyze your skin. If you, if I use avocado oil for moisture and you are not um, dry, you might wanna use rosehip for complexion and brightening and so on, okay? If I use vitamin E, and I didn't mention this one, but one drop is all you're going to need. Um, your favorite glo um, lip glosses have vitamin E and that's why they are so sticky, so it is a very sticky oil, so one drop. But anyways, say I use vitamin E for fine lines under my eyes, and you don't have fine lines. Say you have, um, you might choose vitamin K, 
because you have dark under eye circles and dark under eye circles are 99% of the time caused by a vitamin K deficiency. You see what I mean? Play with these. Um, pick the oils that you need for your skin specifically. You may not need the same exact oils that I do for the same exact concerns that I have. I have done a lot of research on oils. I've talked to naturalists, doctors, dermatologists, estheticians, and countless other people. I have read books and books and books. Um, I believe that every woman should read Dr. Perricone's books about your skin. I have just searched the internet. I have looked at other recipes. I have just really done a lot of research. I've learned about these oils and I could tell you how they've been used from the Egyptian times to the early 1800s all the way until now, but I would bore you to death. So do your own research and you will be able to make any of these recipes for you specifically. They'll be designed for your skin specifically, your skin needs. You'll know what ingredients you're putting on your face, how much active ingredients you're actually getting. And you know, earlier I did say that you might get 2% of retinol or something. And I don't want you to think that there are some five and six hundred dollars and some twelve hundred dollar wrinkle creams and moisture creams that do work that do have a lot of active ingredients but they're six hundred and twelve hundred dollars i'm talking about the ones you get from the drugstore or even like some of your high-end stores they're on the shelves for a while they're being preserved that's what i mean i'm not saying that there's you cannot buy a great anti-wrinkle or anti-aging cream i'm saying for the affordability and the active ingredient percentage per container you could do a lot better for yourself okay so i hope you guys enjoy this video and i hope you're all having a great day thank you so much for watching bye bye